Hello, brothers and sisters. Um, I really hope that your beginning of fall has been um, amazing. I hope that you are reaching into uh, spiritual growth with the Lord and enjoying every minute of your life and um, not taking anything for granted and living in constant gratitude and thanking Father God for every good thing that he does, especially for the life that sustains in you and your loved ones. And um, as we go into the holidays and um, everything along those lines, I just want you to remember that there is a whole reason why we celebrate certain holidays why we are rooted and grounded in what is Thanksgiving or what is um, Christmas and Easter and all those precious holidays that we spend um, being thankful and having gratitude. And just remember that it's not about what you buy for your house to make it look cute. It's not about aesthetic and fall pictures. It's not about any of that. It's about, it's all really all about Christ and all about, um, renewing your mind and realizing what's inside of you is greater than anything that you can surround yourself with um, that is aesthetically pleasing. The Spirit of God is ultimately peace and rest and will convict you and help correct you in your everyday life. So don't forget to reach into it. Reach into it every day. When you feel like you're having bad days, praise him anyway. When you don't feel like the Lord is with you, praise him anyway and stand on the firm foundation that it doesn't matter what your emotions are telling you because your emotions are going to lie to you. The spirit of the Lord brings freedom. The spirit of the Lord is where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. There is freedom. Don't forget that. And a lot of times your emotions can confuse you. And, um, I feel like there's a, the emotions are very, very much high, especially around the holidays and toward the end of the year. But remember where your help comes from, the maker of heaven and earth. Open your Bibles and read the truth. Um, so I'm just going to head right into it. I received revelation last night. Okay. I received this revelation, um, and multiple different times during the day um this revelation came to my mind until last night i saw one post of a person that i follow on instagram and it instantly i was convicted and instantly i knew exactly what i wanted to say on here okay the craziest thing is that people you know your average person who isn't walking with christ is living their everyday life um lost um, emotions really, really up and down, um, focusing on mental health constantly, um, you know, posting all these things about, uh, it's okay to not be okay. It's this and this and that, and that's not true. Okay. It's not okay to not be okay, but there is a solution to that. The solution is reading your Bible and finding out what the Lord, your creator says about you and not living off of what the world says about you. And looking in the mirror and letting your mind and um, letting Satan who's talking in your ear tell you who you are. It's an identity crisis here. We are living in a, such an identity crisis. But the craziest thing to me is that people find the little tiny wisdom, the smallest amount of wisdom from a fortune cookie, from a song, um, from any that's, you know, a song that's not a Christian song. They find the smallest amount of wisdom and they live off of that. And they really think that that wisdom helped them throughout the day. But a lot of the times that somebody is reading something that is prophetic or they, they, they read something that um, helped give them peace, that is actually something that is probably from the Bible. And the Holy Spirit is trying to knock on their heart to get them to open up to them. But they don't give the credit to whom we owe all the credit to, which is the Lord. I was watching um, a friend's story that I follow on Instagram last night, right? And it was a fortune cookie he opened. And it said something about, um, 
if you fo if you um, focus on your worry less, uh, if you focus on worry less, what you're worried about less, um, things will be brighter for you or something along those lines. And he literally said that he said, wow, like I really needed this today. And I was just like in my head, like, are you kidding me? Philippians 4, 6, 4, 7 says, do not be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. And with prayer, supplication, present your request to God with thanksgiving. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart through Jesus Christ. It blows my mind that people do not realize that the things, the random little things that they see on signs, on, you know, fortune cookies or whatever, a lot of that can be traced back into the Bible of an entire chapter, an entire verse on exactly what they they think they need from a little fortune cookie, okay? The most tragic thing is that people are overlooking the revelation found in his word through his love. Like, people find wisdom in small sayings randomly found, about having a positive attitude or something along those lines, but they don't realize the full wisdom of God in the Bible. Second Corinthians uh, 13, 11, it says, and this is Paul talking to all the churches. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. And you know, in these days that we're going through right now, um, it's not about um, agreeing to disagree, okay? Doesn't mean we need to argue because fools despise wisdom and that's just the way that it's going to be, okay? But the thing is, is that the Lord wants us to be in one mind. We are stronger when we ha when we are in one mind. Yes, the body of Christ has multiple different functions in it, as in we have multiple different gifts, we have multiple different things to offer and to add to um, restoration that can come in the revival in this world. But we need to have one mind and one thing in common that we know that we know that we are saved by grace through faith and that we are being trained up in righteousness here. It's not about, oh, this person believes in this, this person believes in that, and that's okay. Like, no, actually, it's not okay. Number one, we should not be surrounding ourselves with unbelievers. What good does light have with darkness? Nothing, okay? Yes, Jesus surrounded himself with sinners, but in the end, he converted all of them. Con conversion as in they had faith in him after that. We should not be surrounding ourselves with people that are unbelievers and they're never gonna, you know, whatever conversation you've had with them, you can tell it goes right over their head because maybe you're not that person to bring them revelation. Pray about them and pray that they receive um, revelation uh, for from God through somebody else, whoever else, if it's not you, pray for them to have that revelation because as a full-time Christian, that is my job title. As a full-time Christian, our main goal should be to unpopulate hell and to be overcrowding heaven because it is a godly sorrow that we do not want to see any of our friends, family members, or even strangers when you have a heart for, when you have a heart for people, like a true follower of Christ, when you have a heart for people, it literally hurts you. It literally gives you sorrow and despair to know that these souls that are living, are making their lives living hell on earth because they're letting Satan run their lives. But the fact that if they don't receive conviction, if they don't lean into what God is trying to do in them, and they don't profess and know that the Lord Jesus Christ is their savior and he is the son of God and he is the truth, the way and the life, they are perishing in hell forever. And that is horrifying to someone who actually loves people, which is what Jesus called us to do is to love one another. The spirit of God convicts and moves and people feel it all the time, but they seem to overlook the Holy spirit who does the inspiring. They want to give the credit to anything else. Like, like when, the, you know, for example, when someone who read that fortune cookie felt something inspiring 
that's the Holy Spirit. That's not just random, uh, that's not just random wisdom that like makes you feel good. Like it's the Holy Spirit, but they, they give the credit to something that's so small of an imprint that someone put. When that quote that I read from that, um, his fortune cookie was straight out of Philippians 4, 6 and 4, 7. And, um, how much better off would people be if they didn't live off their feelings and get, um, get a little bit of a feel good off of just a simple thing like a fortune cookie. Imagine having a permanent high with the Holy Spirit and never needing anything else to tell you otherwise, because you know that you know that you know that the God of peace and love is with you at all times. Um, the glory goes to the simple thoughts of positive thinking and sayings, but all of the real love and wisdom is found in this Bible. And a lot of the things that people say can be found in the Bible. They just refuse to open it because Satan does his best to confuse people into thinking that God is the last thing that they need. Let that sit for a second. Let that sit for a second. If that's you, I encourage you to keep praying. Open your Bible and ask the Lord to help you to understand what you're reading. Ask the Lord to help you to understand and to internalize and to receive every time you open his word. Because 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out by God. All scripture is breathed out by God. People want to complain and try to discredit the Bible as much as possible. It was written by man. It's been translated so many times. It's poorly translated. That does not make a difference that does not make anything different this word has been around for over 2000 years and if christ wasn't so important why does our timelines even have before christ and after christ in our regular timelines that we use in world history why is that so significant that they have that our time is counted off that think about it what do all what do all they know that lived 2000 years ago that has been dwindling away dwindling away other than the people that will will keep on talking about the gospel and not stop all the other people it's dwindling away to where it's like it seems like a fairy tale it doesn't seem like it's real but it's 100% real all scripture is breathed out by god and profitable for teaching for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. It's all for that. If you want to be trained up in righteousness, if you want to trained up for if you want to be trained up and be corrected, open the Bible. If you don't want to be corrected, you're not going to open the Bible. And that's a, that's probably the biggest reason people don't open up open up their Bible because Satan tries to make them feel like they are okay doing what they're doing. But when they're actually posting all over their story about how they are, you know, going through depression and going through this and this and that, if you are spiritually sick, open your Bible, man. And when you're not spiritually sick anymore and the Holy Spirit is filling you and your cup has over overflow with, with joy constantly, then it's a joy for you to open the Bible. Then you know that that's what you need to get your day started is to open your Bible and to receive what the Lord wants to say to you. Go to your quiet place, seek diligently, and he will reward you. You will be healed of everything. You will have healing beyond belief. I have had insane healing, and I cannot even recognize my actions and my thoughts from two and three years ago to now. Because I knew that I knew that the Lord had better for me, that he wanted to correct me and not until I fully submitted to being corrected by him, to letting him lead me and to not listen to anybody else except exactly from the Lord. Yes, I seek godly. I can seek godly counsel and prayer from people that I know and trust that are uh, renewed by the truth of God. Also, anybody else? I'm not hearing it. I'm not hearing it. It doesn't help. See godly counsel, but no, most of all, open the Bible and ask God to teach you how to live your life because he sets you apart and sets you aside for greater and better things 
and we can't even fathom like what his plans are for us. We can't even fathom like what the future holds, okay? Not everything is doom and gloom. Not everything that you think is really happening in this world is really happening. They want to mind conform you. They want to confuse you to thinking that is there is more bad than good. But when the darkness gets darker, the light gets lighter. We don't dim our lights. We are the salt in the earth. We are, sorry, we are salt and light of the earth. And we cannot be taken, our saltiness cannot be taken away. And we should be on the hill with no lamp uh, shade on us. We get brighter and brighter as things get darker and darker. So don't grow weary in well-doing. The real epidemic here, the real pandemic epidemic here is unrecognized spiritual poverty. Blessed are those who realize their spiritual poverty is what Jesus said. Spiritual poverty is when you know that you are lacking the word of God, that you need the word of God, and that you are never satisfied. Um, you're not satisfied with mediocre. You're not satisfied with just being like everybody else and thinking that you don't need to read your Bible every day, thinking that you don't need to pray every day, all day about everything. I literally have prophetic interaction multiple times a day. There is random people that will pop up to me. There is random times that I'll be even like 30 or 40 miles away from my town and I'll see people that I know out of one out of uh, 20,000 people that live in that town. It's all prophetic. Children of God will walk in constant revelation all the time. God will show you things all the time and show you how to live your life, show you who to pray for, and you just got to submit and open your eyes and, and open your ears and ask God to dissect your heart and um, correct you. But if you don't want correction, you're going to constantly have um, trial and mishaps because your own way is not the way. <laughs> so I really truly believe that the, the most, the thing that we need most is to realize our spiritual poverty. Satan does want to confuse you into thinking the last thing that you need to do is to open your Bible and submit to God. That is the first thing you need to do. That is the main thing you need to do. As a child, as a child of God, as a mother, as a father, as a brother and sister in Christ, that is the main thing you need to do is to recognize your spiritual poverty and to be humble and to um, realize that you want peace. You want to create peace. You want to be peace. You want to walk in love and to be a passionate lover of Christ and a lover of people. And it says in um, 2 Timothy, uh, sorry, sorry, one second, Hebrews 4.12. It says that for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. If you read the Bible, you understand really what that means. It literally splits your flesh, splits your soul and your spirit. To where you start to realize and recognize your intentions of your heart. And it starts to shift and be corrected to the desires of the Lord's heart. And the growth, I can't even explain to you the growth and the things that have happened for me this past year. And I know that this is only the beginning. I know that the Lord has better plans for me and for you but you have to submit. You have to want what the Lord wants for you and be ready and willing to be corrected by him because correction for the Lord will equal greatness in Jesus mighty name. So that's the message I have for you guys. Um, I hope that somehow, some way that you are convicted, um, with the Holy Spirit's help through me, because I don't want to have any of my own thoughts and opinions on here. It's all for the glory of God. Remember to give him the glory for every good thing. Do not give yourself the glory. Do not give anybody else the glory except the Lord and watch, watch consistent blessing in Jesus name. Bye you guys.